Okay, um, the next part of this book that then looks at the results from Rutherford's experiment. Now, they would have had a prediction as to what results they would have got had the plum pudding model been true. And the plum pudding model quite simply suggests that we have this positive sphere that has tiny little electrons dotted throughout it. And what we're going to do is we're going to fire these alpha particles at our atom and see what happens and then from that we can deduce the inner workings of that atom. Now we know our alpha particles have a charge of plus two. We also know they're very heavy and they move very very fast um, and for that reason we can ignore these electrons because the electrons aren't going to have any effect on the movement of that alpha particle because the alpha particle is so heavy, the electrons are so light, it'll be a bit like a bus hitting the fly, okay? Yes, it might have a big impact on the fly, but a bus going down a motorway doesn't get deflected by a fly. Um, so it'll come into contact with this positive charge. Now, there's a lot of mass in the atom, but the atom's very spread out, and therefore this charge and the mass have very little impact on our alpha particle and might just deflect it by a very small amount. Likewise, one down here might be deflected away, but by minuscule amounts, that's even exaggerated. You are talking 0.1 of a degree, essentially. Um, so the results that they would have expected would mostly alpha particles come into contact with the sphere. However, charge and mass, very spread out, so they'd only be deflected by very small amounts. And what happens is, um, Rutherford would have sent scientists down, because he didn't do the experiments himself, um, to take the results. And it was two scientists, Geiger and Marsden, which is this sometimes isn't called the Rutherford experiment, sometimes called the Geiger Marsden experiment. Um, they went down, little notebook, turned out all the lights, looked through this microscope, and basically counted the flashes for weeks and weeks and weeks. So remember, when an alpha particle hits in to this fluorescent screen, it produces a little flash. So in this position, if they got flashes, that would mean the alpha particles went straight through. If they put it over here, it means the alpha particles are deflected by small amounts. And if they say change it over here, it means the alpha particles are taking kind of this path to head into it. And what the scientists would have noticed is they were not getting the predicted results from the plum pudding model. So the plum pudding model couldn't be correct. Because what they discovered was the alpha particles weren't deflected by small amounts. In fact, most of the alpha particles weren't deflected at all. They just went straight through zero deflection. But then when they moved it up to here, they started seeing a few alpha particles that were deflected by large angles, um, much larger angles than the plum pudding model would have suggested. Um, and maybe most surprising of all, they also got very very few alpha particles that came back kind of in the rough direction that they were sent in at. Um, this is called backscattering and Rutherford was astounded by this. He said it was like firing a bullet at a tissue and the bullet coming back at you again. Um, so they had these results that didn't agree with the previous model so they needed to come up with a new model and really this is the important thing that you need to know from this part of the unit. You need to know the results and then how Rutherford used those results um, to produce his new model. So the first one is, and we'll kind of write it down here. So from the first observation, the fact that most of the alpha particles pass straight through with no deflection would mean most of the atom is empty space. There's nothing there. Um, there's a famous story about an American general who read about this and decided, okay, well, if I'm made of atoms and the wall is made of atoms and atoms are mostly empty space, I should be able to walk through the wall. And apparently he tried it and um, hurt himself. Now, the next two observations kind of work together. So we get that some were deflected through large angles and a few were deflected back in themselves. This is called backscattering. Now, the fact that they were backscattered, and I would highlight this word and try and use it in examination situations, um, for something to make something slow down and go back the way it came, it has to have been repelled. So that means it must be positively charged. But also, if you think about a bowling ball, if a bowling ball hits into the bowling pins, it might change direction a little bit, but it continues on in roughly the same path because the bowling ball is so much heavier 
than the pins. Um, therefore, for something to backscatter um, those alpha particles, it must be very, very heavy. And that's the final conclusion that Rutherford made. Um, he said kind of from, oops, from observations two and three, he said that at the center of an atom is a small nucleus. Um, that contains all of the positive charge and the vast majority of the mass. Okay, so this is the important bit. Um, so what we kind of get from that is we have a nucleus at the center of an atom we do have electrons, but like we said, we're not worried about the electrons in this case, so we just ignore them. Somewhere down here, there might be the next atom that will also have a nucleus. This is not the scale, because if I was drawn an atom, like I say, we're not going to worry about the electrons. If I was drawn an atom and then drawn a nucleus in that scale, you know, you're talking a little dot like that. So we'll increase it a little bit for this purpose. Um, and then if we have our alpha particles over here, um, so charge plus T doesn't come into contact with anything, goes straight through. Likewise, this one doesn't come into contact with anything, goes straight through. And the vast majority of our alpha particles aren't going to go anywhere near that nucleus, so they pass straight through. Therefore, our atom is mostly empty space. However, some of them will come close to that nucleus. The nucleus is positively charged, the alpha particle is positively charged, um, like charges will repel so our alpha particle will feel a force away from it and that causes it to deflect by a large angle but only the ones that come very close to the nucleus likewise you might have another one down here does something similar comes into contact repelled away large angle but only a few will actually go directly towards our nucleus. The positive charges will repel and because the nucleus is so heavy the alpha particle will be deflected backwards rather than the nucleus be moved away. Um, so we get these ones here and there'll be lots of these that are passing straight through. That's our first observation. The ones here and here are deflected through large angles and very few then are backscattered. This is our third observation and from that we get those conclusions. Okay, most of the atom is empty space, but at the center there's a small nucleus, contains all of the positive charge and most of the mass. And then from that we get our Rutherford um, model of the atom, which just contains our nucleus. And this is not the scale, once again. And then we have our electrons, which we just draw as X's. You don't have to worry too much about them in physics. Um, in shells around the outside of that. Now, Rutherford didn't know it at the time, but over the next course of, what, 10, 20 years, they discovered the particles that make up this nucle nucleus. So it contains um, protons, which give this positive charge, and neutrons, and we'll look more at them in the next video.